Hello everyone, I'm Phoenix Tremaine and today I'm going to do a daily recap of Days of Our Lives for Monday, April the 26th. And today I'm only going to do Days of Our Lives because I don't think Bold and Beautiful and Young the Wrestlers was worth really doing a daily recap on. I'm still catching up on General Hospital, but by May Sweeps, which is next week, I will begin once again resuming General Hospital Week in Review, General Hospital Daily Recap if they need a recap. And, um, um, some, uh, you know, spoilers and things like that. All the good stuff you expect from this channel. But first, if you haven't done so, please take a minute to subscribe. If you have, thank you very much. Don't forget to hit that like button because that lets you two know to send more soap fans our way. And we have this membership where you get spoilers up to a week in advance. So you got the General Hospital spoilers for the week of May 3rd already if you're a member. Um, and you get articles throughout the week telling you what's going on in the soap world. So give that membership a try. And then, you know, you'll be connected with the soap fam. And I have a personal video that um, I'm going to be uh, releasing to the soap fam membership. Um, detailing some, some personal things. And uh, so if you want to know a little bit more about me, that's another reason why to be a member. So now we're going to get into this daily recap for Days of Lives for Monday, April the 26th. Paulina takes her money back. Now, I clearly remember Xander like putting a check in his pocket or something on Friday. But um, n mon this episode, now I could be wrong. Maybe my memory's failing me. But I could have swore he put that check like in his pocket or something. And But this time the check was in his hand uh, so that she could snatch it out of his hand. Um... When Chanel described uh, why she did what she did, it actually made more sense to me because um, I sort of just forgot that Xander actually told her he wasn't divorcing her, that, you know, her money, her mother's loaded and he wants some of the money. And then she just decided, well, okay, fine. If that's what, what it takes, then I'm going to get 50%. So um, Paulina was devastated. Uh, she feels like a bad mother and that she raised a spoiled child. We know there's a lot of parents out there that came from nothing, usually. And, you know, they acquire so much over the years, whether they started a business or they got a good job or whatever. And then they just don't want their kids to have any kind of struggle the way they have or to even really earn, you know, uh, the money that they're giving their kids so that they become, some of them, not all of them, but some of them become just like Chanel, you know, selfish and wants everybody to do everything for them because she's always had everything done for her. But uh, Paulina felt like she was a bad mother. She ran into Abe where, you know, she told him what happened and they commiserated together. Uh, Xander agrees to give Chanel the divorce. He wants his ring back, which she throws at him. And um, it left me thinking, what was the point of the story? This was like a bold and beautiful story where it was like two weeks, maybe three, that they were married, if they were really married. You know, I don't really feel like they were really married. But now, you know, they're going to get it like a quickie divorce now. So it was like, did we really need to ship Sir out of town so Xander could be married to Chanel for three weeks? That makes absolutely no sense to me. Only thing I can think is something happened behind the scenes that made them decide they wanted to put Sarah on a break. Because um, that's the only thing that could explain this 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 particular storyline. Um, it made me frustrated that Abe doesn't try to talk sense into Theo. That you are taking a woman who's deeply in love with her husband to another country supposedly as friends but you know that you want it to be more romantic and they keep talking about well what happens it's a sort of like the same Gabby scenario from before where Stefan and Gabby fell in love but what would happen if Stefan was on top of Gabby and suddenly she turned to Abigail and then it'd be like oh snap Abigail's gonna freak out because now she's got this guy on top of her that you know, is not her husband. <laughs> so, 
Uh, so I can understand why people really didn't like that Stefan storyline. Not to the degree, to the degree, because it was the most personality storyline. But this was Amnesia storyline, where Sierra eventually will get her memory back. And Ron said in an article, well, on Twitter, that um, uh, Sierra's leaving, but still continue to have faith in your favorite couple. So he does eventually want to bring Sierra and Ben back together. I guess that's why he made sure they had this psychic connection or whatever. But that just makes the whole situation with Theo that much more distasteful when the easy exit could have just been saying she went to go be with Hope or to go get help for her amnesia out of town away from Ben. But I just have a feeling that they wanted to do a storyline in a way that Sierra didn't want anything to do with Ben so that Ben could get with Claire so that when Sierra does get her memory back, uh, she probably catches him and Claire in bed or something and then she's mad all over again and leave town again because she's supposed to come back this summer for another short-term visit. <sighs> Gabby puts the brakes on doing the deed with Creepy Philip, and until the actor stops bring some new mannerisms into the character. He just makes the character feel so sleazy. And I'm like, uh, Gabby, I think you may not want that particular D. And so she stopped because truly she's in love with Jake and or the idea of being in love with Jake because she was in love with Stefan. And so she's having flashbacks of, of uh, Jake you know, while she's with Philip, so she's like, stop, you know, I'm, I'm not ready for this. Which is good, because they're about to put Gabby and Jake back together again, I think. When Kate, Kristen pretended to be Kate, breaks up with him. And with this whole Susan premonition, I think that's going to have him running back to Gabby. And then there's there was a spoiler that has said something about Kate may now take Jake back when she gets free. Because she's going to get free in May Sweeps. Um, which isn't like another week. So I think that seeing how quickly he runs back to Gabby may be one of the reasons why she doesn't maybe out Kristen right off. She may make want, may want to make Jake pay a little bit or something. I don't know how it was going to work out, but yeah, it's about to go down. Paulina says that she's leaving town, which like caught me off guard um, to settle things. Uh, but then she says she's just trying to settle things. Be, uh, in Miami because she's moving to Salem but she'll be gone for a week or two so that's just letting you know that she will be back May sweeps but you probably aren't going to see Paulina for like two weeks um, it, which means she comes back either the week of May, May first week of May sweeps or the second week of May sweeps she whispered a secret to the twins um, when she was in her room by herself with them but we did not get to hear that secret. I was disappointed that we didn't get to hear the secret. Um, I just feel like the secret is she's she's Lonnie's real mother. Um, I don't know how they're going to pull that off. Did Abe not know he was with her? Did Paulina give her child to uh, Lonnie's mother, Merlin McCoo? I can't remember the character's real name. It's played by Mer Merlin McCoo. And then Merlin McCoo just told Abe that that was his daughter. Um, when it was really Paulina's daughter. So I don't know how things are going to work out. Maybe because she gave up Lonnie, that's why she's been spoiling Chanel so much. Um, but soon, Chanel will be moving in with Lonnie and Eli. Normally, <clears throat> normally that would mean Chanel would try to seduce Eli. But with the potential storyline between her and Allie, that may not happen. But I'm just getting this soap um, spider sense that <clears throat> she's going to be uh, um, Lonnie's sister or something. Um, Lonnie tries to talk Theo out of going <clears throat> with Sierra um, to Africa. We're taking Sierra to Africa with him. And um, he, of course he doesn't listen. Um, Eli says that Theo's going to do what Theo's going to do. And once again, we get another character not <clears throat> really laying down the law to Theo that this is wrong. Abe didn't do it. 
Eli didn't do it. Um, you know, Claire didn't do it. No other character is really telling him, look, you know, she, this is wrong for you to do. That, you know, if she gets her memory back, she is going to hate you <laughs> because, you know, she wants to be with Ben. She don't want to be with you. Um, or it would be even more horrible if she comes back to Salem pregnant with Theo baby uh, and her memory back. Now, that would be devastating. Not saying that's going to happen, but I'm just saying all of the bad scenarios that could happen off camera. You know, good Lord, I don't even put that in the air. See her pregnant with Theo baby and get her memory back. And then that'd be her reason not to get with Ben. Or her seeing Ben with Claire. Um, <clears throat> Chloe and Brady talk on the phone for the whole episode about her friend, which is Lucas, that she doesn't say his name. And um, to talk about, you know, whatever else is going on. I fast forwarded through all that. Um, stopped a little bit to listen. Didn't care what they were talking about and kept on fast forwarding. Um, then Stacy Hayduck, I don't know if any of you actually caught this, but she said her line wrong. I rewinded to make sure I heard what she said correctly. So Stacy makes a slip in this episode and she says Kate had to find out that um, I was that I'm Susan Banks or that she was Susan Banks. So, no, the line should have said Kristen Demir, but somebody in editing or directing did not catch that she said the wrong name. So I'm curious if you, as a fan, under uh, caught that she said Susan Banks and not Kristen Demir. There were Kate found out that I'm Susan Banks. I think that's what the line was. Uh, and so down to the Demir wine selling, Kate goes, and then I put in quotation marks again. <laughs> so, and now it was like before when they put people down in a wine cellar, it was, it was bare. It was like, it was like gray. It was definitely a place that people didn't go down often. Now it's all good looking and you got actual wine in there. I'm like, how can you expect to hold somebody a hostage as much drinking as those characters do, somebody's always grabbing a drink or something, you know, or even, you know, Jack or somebody goes down there wanting to get a quick bottle or something, or Chad, I'm sure he's going to need a drink with this whole Quinn pregnancy thing. So, yeah, um, another person goes down into the Demir's wine cellar. Um, then we have a moment where Theo is nice to Chanel, and that was the episode. So, um, that's it for this daily recap. Like I said, Young and the Restless, actually, Young and the Restless episode I watched today is actually Tuesday episode, um, not Friday's episode, not Monday's episode. So I watched the day ahead, um, episode of Young and the Restless, and that is the one that I basically felt like it was boring and nothing really happened. Um... And Bold and Beautiful is just more whining from Liam and, and whatever. And him definitively saying he wants to keep the secret from Hope. So, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this daily recap. And let me know in the comment section if you caught um, Stacey Hayduck's slip of the tongue saying the wrong name. Thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.